We finished the why for a literature review. We finished what are the uh, the sources. We finished how to be done and what is the next step. Going to the confusing part, the relation between journals, publisher, and research engine. There are journals, and if you go to any journal, just flip the page, the first page, okay, you will find here the editorial board of the journal. The journal has editor-in-chief, associate editors, the reviewers, editorial board, um, a coordinator. Those are the, the, the team of the expertise of the journal. And each journal has to, yes, has to find, has to find a publisher. You see this journal, those are the expertise, okay, but those expertise can't publish. So they have to find a publisher. Here, the Walter Clover as a publisher. So there is a journal, exactly, there is a publisher. The publisher, those people who are expert in publishing and preparing and printing all the copies and distributing it. And finally, something named the research engine the research engine doesn't publish research engine doesn't uh, doesn't have any contact with the author but they are like index so here for example uh, the Arab journal of your uh, Arab journal of urology the journal of urology those are journals and those journals have to find a publisher which is Elsevier and the, finally, something, something named the research engine, which is the I'm going to give you another example to understand more. Okay, now me as an author, I have a direct relationship only with the journal. I submitted my article to the journal, and there are two possibilities, either to reject it, to return it back to me, or to be accepted. If the, the after reviewing and after uh, all of those, Finally, the journal will send it to you, the, your article is accepted, exactly. So the journal has authority on this scientific part. And once it's accepted, the journal informs the publisher. Now the journal informs the publisher. And now you, the, 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 the communication, the line between the publisher and the author, now it's open. The publisher will verify with you things which have a relationship to the publication itself. The, uh, the, the, uh, the arrangement of the figures, the arrangement of the tables, the make sure of the author names, the affiliation, their affiliations, and you have to uh, uh, prove the gallery proof at, at, at the end. Those are the, the, the tasks that have been, that should be done by the publisher. Here, your relationship between the, between, the, between the author and the publisher. And finally, after publishing the article, it is indexed on the research engine. A common mistake, really, done by many people said, I wanted to publish on PubMed, I wanted to publish on Scopus, I wanted to publish on uh, the uh, Google Scholar. Those are not a publisher, okay? They are research engine only, okay? Here is uh, uh, something also you have to understand because the next lecture will be PubMed and you will see on PubMed uh, free text or uh, available and you will see another uh, articles with no free text. So how it's going? So the publisher has a fees. The, there is a fees of publication itself. And the fees can be, uh, can be taken from either the producer or the consumer. Who is the producer? Yes, the author and the journal. Who is the consumer, the reader, or the institution, or the universities, or the hostels? If the fee is taken from the author, if the fee is taken from the journal, the, 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 the article will be f free access, which we, which we say open access. So if I say to you open access means that those articles, the full text article available on any research engine. If you go now, you see, you see here, if you go to the PubMed, you will see this icon, which is PubMed. PubMed Central, I'm going to explain to you in PubMed, which you can find the default text. However, if the reader, if the institution, the consumers will pay, you will find only the abstract. Yes, you will find only the abstract on the PubMed. And if you go to just click here on the full text, the full text uh, uh, article, it will, it will take you, it takes you to the the, the, web, the website of the journal and he will say to you or ask you for subscription. You see here the, the article cost is 35.95. It's really very cheap for one article. So usually institutions, the big institutions have a, a subscription to, the, to subscribe those uh, articles. I think now you understand more what is the difference between open access and the journals and the journal that have the subscription. Okay. 
So going now, research engine. Do we have to use research engine? Uh, is, it, uh, is it important to go to the, uh, the PubMed or Scopus or search or uh, Google Scholar? What do you think? Okay, I'm going now to give you three, um, uh, three, three scenarios in research. The first scenario is I'm going to go to the website of each journal, website, and then I'm going to search about a topic. Yes, I'm going now. This is three, three journals, Arab Journal of Urology, and this is the World Journal of Urology. The last one is the, is the Urology Annals. This is the first scenario. I have to go in each website of each, each journal to search about my topic, which is re really frustrated. Okay, is this a, a, there is another way, I think. Okay, the second way, which is a little bit easier, is going to the publisher website. Elsevier, for example, has many, many journals hosted by Elsevier, published by Elsevier. And the, the, one of the journals hosted by Springer, and the Urology Annual was hosted by Walter Zuclaude. So I can go to each publisher to search about or search about my topic, which is still you know, takes time. The best scenario is going to the search engine. Yes, so all of those articles, all of those publishers are indexed on the research engine. So once you put your topic on the search engine like PubMed, it switches you to whole, to bring for you the whole, you know, from the whole literature, but only in your topic. This is why we recommend for research engine. Just uh, uh, now we finished the, uh, uh, this introduction about literature review, just going to um, uh, just introduction about the PubMed. We have this, the two lectures about how to uh, do literature review about in, on, on PubMed, but just those, the, this lecture is introductory lecture because we are going to use uh, several terms you have to know before going to the live demonstration or the hands-on. Okay, so I always uh, in teaching um, uh, organized things. So your tasks on PubMed have to uh, uh, be organized into three main jobs. The first job is doing yes relevant research, cutting irrelevant. This is the task number one, and uh, I can say to you, many people doing a, a perfect literature review. However, they can't save. They 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 don't know how to save. So the last step is saving your literature. But in between when really you have to narrow your research because you can't navigate in 300 or 400 uh, articles but you can navigate between 30 and 40 so you have to squeeze the, the relevant the relevant search to you have to narrow it into more relevant and finally you have to save it so you have now three major jobs on PubMed number one doing a relevant search and then narrow our research and finally save our research and and uh, uh, always you have to know about PubMed general area about as a software okay number one is a relevant search uh, it is difficult concept really in most of the people I'm going now I choose to uh, to uh, to record this uh, this lecture on library because I'm, I'm I'm so interested to show to you what's the difference between PubMed and the mesh I will return back to this slide after giving you this brief history. Uh, I think you know the National Institute of Health, Bethesda, Maryland, um, United States, and it has National Library of Medicine. In 1960, they started the search named the Midline. Uh, the National Library of Medicine asked the publishers to send the journals just to include the articles or published articles onto a database. Really, there are certain criteria for the journals to be uh, accepted onto the database, but it's not my it's not my issue here in, in this presentation. But uh, you know, you have to know just Midline is a surface it created in 1960, which is a journal citation database. In 1996, they released the PubMed, which is simply online research engine. It is simply, this is a simple definition of the PubMed. In year 2000, they included, they bought full text articles. I think now you understand, what does it mean the full text articles? If the, the publisher takes the fees from the, either the journal or from the author, the full text, the, the whole text, the whole text or the full text, article is available online it's available for anybody to uh, to read so you may expect now the PubMed includes all the abstracts plus the full text articles of the open access journals uh, also just to know about mesh which is medical subject headings 
I will explain Mish now if I return back to this slide. Simply in conclusion or a summary, you may consider PubMed is the whole library, okay? In your in your uh, in your hospital or in your college, this is the PubMed. And just consider the Mish is the index only. Uh, this is a good example to understand the difference between Mish and the PubMed. Uh, I intended to come here in the library to show you because it's a little bit confusing in the beginning. Uh, the PubMed is like the whole library. This is the whole library like the PubMed. And the Mesh is only the index. Okay. So the first way to pick up to pick up a, a book, I can circulate in the whole library to pick it up, but which is really frustrated. I'm looking at a book on, on urology, for example. I can go do the index first. No, it's not urology. It's not urology. Yes, here is my urology, and there is a subclassification. And can I can I can easily pick my book from this shelf using the index. This this is the, the mesh, okay? To understand also mesh and PubMed, so as a librarian receives a new book, what she is doing, she usually labels the box based on the speciality. And you look here, there is numbers for easy retrieval. And we have an index for the whole library here, includes all the numbers, so I can go easily here by, by speciality, by number to pick this book. This is the easy way to understand the PubMed and the Mesh. So, PubMed is the whole library and the Mesh is the only the index for that reason. On, on, on doing a research on Mesh, we just write the keywords. So the keywords determine which shelf of your book. If you go to the Mesh, write your, uh, your, uh, your keywords, Mesh, it is only an index. Okay. Going now to something named the Boolean operator. Boolean operator, there are operator they will help you to localize, focus your research. Uh, there are the R3 and should be capitalized in, in research. Uh, um, in my experience, I usually end the, mo the most frequently used, less frequently I used or, and I didn't use not, okay, too, too much. So here, for example, consider uh, A, those cycle, as you see in the, present, in the presentation, cycle A and cycle B. Consider cycle A is the literature or the articles have been published on diabetes and B on hypertension. If I write, for example, diabetes and hypertension, what does it what does it mean? If I write diabetes and hypertension, what does it mean? It means that the research engine will bring for me the articles, the article that dealt with both together. For example, hypertension in diabetic patient or diabetic and hypertensive patient. This is if I put and. If I put or, it means that it, will, it brings for me the whole literature, the whole articles, either on hypertension or the diabetes. Not as you see here, I don't use it too often. This is the something named the Boolean operator on research engine. They are universal. You can use it on PubMed, Scubus, Scholar, uh, uh, Google Scholar, anywhere. Uh, uh, also, the keywords in all the articles, in all the articles, you will, you will find something named the keywords in all the articles. If you open any journal, any article, you will find here uh, underneath the abstract, the keywords. The keywords are, you know, very unique to each article. We are using it to localize the research. As I explained to you, the, the index of the, the, the library, it is the same. And look to this example, rehabilitation following surgical repair of the rotator cuff, a systematic review. If you look to this title, Rehabilitation Following Surgical Repair of the Rotator Cuff, a systematic review. So here is the keywords, number one, rotator cuff, and then repair, surgery, post-operative, and such and such. So if anyone goes to research, to research, he will find, if he writes the key, those keywords, he will find those articles that have those titles. And another very wonderful also, uh, uh, we use it too often, the PICO. So I think you, you heard about it. Always in going or before going to the uh, doing conductor literature review, just to formulate a question. Bring, bring the titles together. Uh, bring the titles together. So here it's a very, uh, PICO is a very helpful, very simple. P for population or the problem. I for intervention. C for control or the uh, comparison and O for outcome. If you see here, I bought an example. The first example, population lower uterine stone, for example, less than six millimeter. Intervention, I will uh, give them medication X, like tamsulosin. C is a placebo and O the outcome, which is the stone passage. You can formulate you know, on doing or before, before doing the literature review, your question using PICO. 
Okay, we finished now job number one. Let's go to job number two. As I said to you, in initial research, you will find thousands uh, of thousands of the articles, and which is really tough. It's very difficult for you. So you have to narrow them. How to narrow them? You have to narrow by. You go to the PubMed. You will see on the left side this wonderful column based on the age, based on the gender, page on the type of research. You can narrow more your research. I'm going to show you this job on the hands-on next next lecture. And finally, you have to save your search. We have different, we have different options for saving your search. I'm going to show you in the in the next lecture. You can take my experience in the literature review. After after I'm doing the literature review, after I'm saving the articles on the PubMed, I usually print them. You see here like 30 articles. I squeeze, I narrow my research into those the, which is more relevant. I usually print them. I usually read them and then I highlighted, you know, the important things here. This will be helpful for me in writing the manuscript. And usually I always print at least five full text articles here. Those are the full text articles with the folder. I have to read them carefully before writing the manuscript. This is another, another uh, research. I printed out all the re relevant articles after finishing the research on PubMed. I highlighted important things. And this, and finally, as with the, the important information, it will be very helpful for me in writing the manuscript. Finally, a PubMed or any research engine has three jobs relevant search, limit your research, and finally, save your research. Thanks for having me in, and see you in the next lecture for the hands on practice on PubMed. Thank you.